if you are struggling and if you have fear and if the idea of career advancement is a little bit scary to you and you feel like, oh, well, like I'll listen to advice, but I don't know if I'm going to apply it because that's too scary because I'm not good enough because I don't belong here because I question myself all the time. If you feel that way, I just want you to remember that those very feelings and those very struggles are a chance for you to practice growing these muscles of asking yourself, is this problem what it looks like? Or can I find something within this from which I can move forward and begin to move myself towards a solution? Welcome to The Art of Speaking Up, a podcast that empowers professional women to rise. I'm your host, Jessica Guzik. And in this show, I take you undercover into the stories and lessons that I learned, sometimes the hard way, throughout my career. I also talk with working women, leaders, and coaches to show you that no matter what your struggle is and no matter what your career goals are, you already have all the talent that you need to succeed. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Ah, it feels so good to be here. It feels so good to be talking to you. The show is on a break right now, which is much needed for me so I can do the work to get more episodes ready and do more interviews. But honestly, I've really missed being in front of the microphone. I've missed talking to you. And even though I'm not talking to you live, like in a traditional sense, like I'm across from you and we're having a conversation. When I put these out and when I record these and then when I hear from you, that's what it feels like. It feels like a community and a friendship that we are developing and I feel like I've been missing you. So it feels really good to say hello and pop in and share some thoughts with you. And this episode is really inspired by an Instagram story survey that I did in my Insta stories where I asked everyone on Instagram if you were interested on the show, if you were interested in getting more advice and more information and more help on how to advance your career, how to proactively pursue a promotion, how to move up and rise up and get greater titles and greater responsibilities and hopefully greater salaries and all of the things that I want for women and that I want to help women achieve using this show. I asked you if that was something that you are interested in and that you wanted more guidance and more help with. And 99% of the people that answered that survey in my Insta stories said yes. 99%, almost every single one of you. And this is something that I can definitely help with through my own experiences and my guests' experiences. And I am so excited in season three and beyond to bring you some content and some guidance that can help you advance, that can help you take control of your career, help you pursue a promotion. I want all of those things for you. And I'm I'm overjoyed. I'm so excited to help you with that because that's what I'm most excited about. But I wanted to put out this episode as a seed to this topic because when it comes to things like tactical advice and when it comes to like, okay, what are the steps that you need to take to pursue a promotion or to advance in your career? When it comes to tactical advice, I know that sometimes it's easy to hear the advice and take the advice and not always fully act on it. Maybe you don't act on it at all or you kind of partially act on it. And I find that this can happen often when our mindset isn't in the right place because it's very, very easy to hear advice. It's very easy to listen to a podcast. It's very easy to pursue your knowledge and build your knowledge around these topics. The hard part comes when it's actually time to do it because if our mindset isn't right and we're afraid and we're scared of what the outcome might be and it feels too risky and it feels so big and scary, we might stop ourselves from even doing it. And so this episode is really all about the mindset and the way you think about yourself before you actually take action. And I wanted to use this bonus episode just to push you a little bit and make sure that when 
you are listening to some of these more tactical pieces of advice that I'm going to put out to try to help you with advancement as much as I possibly can as the creator and host of this show to make sure that you're not stopping yourself dead in your tracks before you even give yourself a chance to succeed. And I want to address one belief that I know many people struggle with that I've definitely struggled with. And I want to just break it down a little bit because I think it could potentially get in the way for some people out there. And that is the belief that I am not smart enough. I am not good enough. I am missing something. And there's something about me deep down inside at the deepest levels that is inadequate for this. And everyone else who listens to this podcast and all of the other women around me, they're going to go for it. And they're really good. And they're going to advance in their careers and work on their mindset and make all of these efforts and take all of these steps to go after the things that they want. But not me because I'm different. I'm not smart enough. I'm missing something. I come from a different set of skills, or I'm somehow not at the capability level of the people around me. Whatever it is, if you have an idea like that swirling around in your head, it's going to make it very, very difficult for you to take action and take steps in the direction, because with every step you take, it's almost like you're trying to take steps on the floor, and there's glue on your your shoes. There's like crazy glue on your shoes. Well, maybe not crazy glue because I think that might be too sticky. Like you actually wouldn't be able to lift your foot. But imagine like there's glue on your shoes and like you're lifting your shoe and it's like those stretchy glue strings connecting the bottom of your shoe to the ground. And with every step you take, it's like that glue makes it so hard to take the step, which means that increases the chances you might just stop taking the steps because they feel so heavy. And those stories and those questions that we have and that self-doubt is like the glue on the bottom of your shoes that you're trying to walk and you're like, man, this is so, so, so hard. Why is this so painful? But what I want to say is if you're not able to solve that right away, I want to show you how the glue and the discomfort that happens when you keep lifting your foot off the ground and you're like, oh, it's so sticky and like it's this is so hard. I just want to show you how there is value in the glue and sometimes value in the pain and the discomfort that the glue causes as you're walking. Because what I don't want you to think is because this is hard and because you struggle and because there's glue on the bottom of your shoe, that rhymed, that this isn't for you. (laughs) That also rhymed. That was not intentional. I want you to understand that you could view it, you could view the struggle, the self-questioning, you can view it as a part of the process versus something that gets in the way of the process itself. So instead of saying, in order for me to show up more at work, to ask for what I want, to go for a promotion, to get on my next stage, which I talked about in the season two finale, in order for me to do that and to start taking those steps... I need to take the glue, I need to get it off my shoes so I can go walk towards my goal. I want to flip that from needing to get the glue off before you can even do anything to saying to yourself, ah, I have glue on my shoes. It is very, very, very hard to walk. But what does that mean? What does it mean then if I have glue on my shoes and it's going to be hard to walk? What it means is that by the time I have walked from point A to my desired point B with this freaking glue on my shoes. By the time I get there, I'm going to be so strong because with every step, I had to focus and I had to persevere and I had to stay with it and not stop. Imagine how freaking resilient and strong I'm going to feel when I get to point B, which is going to make me so much more effective when I get there because along the way I was practicing staying with myself, I was practicing being on my own side. And if I had just walked there and there was no glue on my shoes and it was so easy and I was just able to get there without any pain or any struggle, 
how much value would I be able to add once I'm there? What would I have learned on the way? And then what if I encounter a really tough problem when I get there? I haven't been struggling on the way. So when I get there, I'm not going to bring that depth of experience that I would bring if this was actually hard and I was actually not only just on this journey of advancing myself professionally, but also on this journey of learning to work with myself learning to work with my challenges, learning to shift my mindset so that when I get there, being in hard situations and doing hard things and being okay with imperfection and not running away from things that are uncomfortable, when I get there, those are all going to be tools in my toolkit that I'm going to be able to use once I attain my quote unquote goal. So the process of working through something difficult, the process of pushing through in those moments where you're doubting yourself, that is where growth is going to happen. And that growth is going to help you be better at whatever it is you ultimately end up doing, especially especially if the thing that you end up doing requires a greater level of leadership skills than what you're currently doing now, which is highly likely because as we move up, there is more leadership required from us. So what this means is that what you struggle with now is a training ground for the future. And that doesn't mean that it's not going to be difficult, and that doesn't mean that you're not going to have moments where you're going to want to stop, and you're going to be doubting yourself, and you're going to be like, oh, I just wish this was easy. Stop with the inspirational stuff. Just make it easy. It doesn't mean those moments aren't going to happen. They're going to happen regularly, most likely. But whatever you're struggling with is not going to stop you from getting to your final destination, and it's going to bring you so much value when you get there. It's as if you are walking with your glue on the bottom of your shoes to this destination. And when you get to the destination, you're like, whoa, I thought this was the end. I thought once I got here, that would be it and everything would be great and I'd feel confident. But the destination is like glue mountain. So it's like you got to the thing you wanted and everyone's like, welcome to glue mountain where you have to climb this sticky mountain. And if there are people around you that didn't struggle on the way and they didn't have glue on their shoes and they just walked to glue mountain and they get there and now it's like sticky, they're like, holy crud, what am I going to do? This mountain is sticky. This is so hard. They might not be used to it, but you're like, oh, I know what this is. This is struggle. This is challenge. This is difficulty. Ah, I've done this before. I think I know how to climb Glue Mountain. And what this is really boiling down to is a core leadership trait. And to frame this in a non-glue analogy, and to be perfectly honest, the glue thing just came. I didn't expect it to go so far, and it's a bit strange, but I hope it was helpful. But to frame this in more of a traditional way, I will share a core leadership skill that is exactly what I'm talking about. And people who are really good leaders and people who are able to not just run companies, but grow companies turn around companies, drive results in whatever they're working on, even in difficult situations. Anyone who is able to take the difficult and transform the difficult into a successful outcome is someone who has the unique ability to see the possibility within the problem. The possibility within the problem. Because when we're in our jobs and we're leading, and we're solving challenges, whether the challenges that we're solving are very much about the work itself, the team itself, the business, the thing that you're doing, whether they're kind of like work output challenges, or whether they're people challenges, team challenges, interpersonal challenges, all of which arise as you build a career, regardless of what those challenges are, as a leader and as a contributor, it either is or will one day be your responsibility 
to not only fix those challenges and not only fix problems that are going to arise constantly, but actually still have successful outcomes in the face of problems. And one of the things that differentiates someone who's able to be a strong leader in problematic situations versus someone who is not able to do that is the ability to see possibility and problem. So when a problem comes up, does your brain just shut down and go, oop, problem, bye-bye, time to stop, we're done, problem, problem, problem? Or does your brain say, okay, problem, where's the possibility in the problem? And this is not always an easy thing to do, and the possibility might be really, really hard to see, but that ability to step back and to see a problem as more than a problem and to learn to search for possibility in the problem and to learn to ask yourself, is there a better way for me to get from point A to point B even though there is this glue on the bottom of my shoes and it's going to be hard? That ability is an ability that you're going to need when you get from point A to point B, which is the ability to move from a struggle, constricted, and fearful state to a state where you are looking for possibilities and solutions, and you're in a creative, open space, and you're able to move things forward. That ability can get you so far professionally, and it is so important. I would argue it might be one of the probably the top three important core skills, in my opinion, to advancing professionally, and that ability to be creative and see solutions and see them even though you're in a quote-unquote problem or challenge or struggle, that ability is something that's going to make you excellent at being a leader, and you get to practice that ability in your current situation if you are struggling internally with yourself. And you get to say to yourself, hmm, what's the possibility within this problem? Well, there's a problem because I'm not feeling great. I'm questioning myself. I'm questioning whether I'm worthy of this. How can I open up my mind and see possibility within that? How can I move towards a solution-oriented view of this? And how can I begin to get creative about how I'm going to begin to make forward progress as opposed to just staying stuck exactly where I am? And so if you are struggling and if you have fear and if the idea of career advancement is a little bit scary to you and you feel like, oh, well, like, I'll listen to advice, but I don't know if I'm going to apply it because that's too scary because I'm not good enough because I don't belong here because I question myself all the time. If you feel that way, I just want you to remember that those very feelings and those very struggles are a chance for you to practice growing these muscles of asking yourself, is this problem what it looks like? Is this just pure 100% problem? Or can I find something within this from which I can move forward and begin to move myself towards a solution? It is a way of thinking that can be applied to yourself. It can be applied to a business problem. It can be applied to a team challenge. It can be applied to so many things. It's a way of thinking and seeing the world. And it's hardest to apply it to yourself because we're so subjective with ourselves. And it's like, sort of like it's harder to solve our own personal problems than a Sudoku puzzle, because we don't have like strong emotional feelings about the Sudoku puzzle. But when it comes to our own shiz, we have really strong feelings about it, right? So it's hardest to apply it to us and to look at ourselves objectively and say, how can I move through this quote unquote problem? But because it's the hardest, it gives us so much strength and it gives us so much resilience so that when we finally arrive at our destination, we are equipped with this incredible way of looking at challenging things and this incredible toolkit that's going to serve us as we move through our careers. And so when you hear this advice and you start thinking about career advancement and you start questioning yourself and asking yourself if it's for you, Just remember that all of those questions and doubts and pains, I know it can be scary. I know things can get painful and hard with some of this stuff. But just remember 
that those are like little mini portals for growth if you choose to adopt this belief and if you choose to see them that way. It doesn't mean things will always be easy. It doesn't mean there aren't going to be moments where things are difficult. It doesn't mean that everything will always be successful and good and perfect, but it means that you have options and it means that you can choose to view an internal struggle that you might have with yourself as something that is not only something you can get through and you'll be fine, but actually something that's going to help you become so strong as you move through it. And that's really what I would like you to keep in mind as you think about your career and you think about taking action to advance yourself and to move forward. So that is the message of today's episode. I would love to hear what you think. I would love to hear where you're at mindset wise. And the more that I know about that, the more that I can help you. The one thing that I care about most with this show is impact. And the one thing that honestly makes me the happiest is when I hear from you and I learn about you. And it just fills me with joy. And I would be overjoyed to hear from you and to connect with you. So please feel free to reach out to me. I'm on Instagram. My handle is The Art of Speaking Up. And if you love this episode, screenshot it and put it in your Insta stories. And then I'll put it in my Insta stories and we'll have like a little Insta stories love fest, which is really fun as always. And I'm going to end today's bonus episode with a little bit of listener love. And I actually have to go get the thing that I'm going to read. So hold on. Let me grab it. Okay, I got it. I'm back. Um, I want to try to end my solo episodes with just something special, something inspirational, could be anything. And uh, as I was preparing for this episode and kind of organizing my ideas and what I wanted to share, I grabbed a notebook and I'm a notebook slash journal addict. So I have a lot of journals and they're like half used and half written in. And some of them are to do journals and some of them are personal journals and some of them are just filled with random stuff. But I picked one up and it was half written in and I found old journal entries that I had written a while ago to myself to try to make myself feel better. And there was a passage that I read that really made me feel better and I wanted to read it to you and I've redacted a little bit of it because there were some personal, very personal bits in it, but I wanted to read it to you in the hopes that if you're having a tough day or if you are having one in the future, this will help you. So this is what I wrote and this is how I want to end today's episode. It says, Jess... Please try to have a good day today. Try not to get overly concerned about these things that are showing up in your life, about the places where you're struggling. Please stop stressing about having too many podcasts to listen to and having too many podcasts saved in your queue. That is hilarious that I was so stressed about that. Just enjoy being alive, having a beautiful job that brings you joy, and living in an incredible city with your partner. You don't need to read every book that you want to read. You don't need to learn every idea that you need to learn. It is okay if you don't get all of it. And it's even okay if you fail in a lot of things. It's okay if you fail. It's okay if you laugh. It's okay if you cry. And it's okay if you feel lonely. That's the point of life. So when things don't go quote unquote right, don't take it as quote unquote wrong. Just take it as part of the journey. So I wanted to share that with you. (laughs) can be stressed about so many things, stressed about all the books I want to read, but also stressed about serious things. But if there's anything that you're stressed about, I hope that that could help. I'm so excited for season three. There's really good stuff coming up and I cannot wait. In the meantime, I'm going to try to put out a bit more bonus content if I'm able to between now and then, but you will most definitely be hearing from me for season three and that will be the week in September, the week after Labor Day. That's when I'm going to kick off the season. I can't wait. Thank you to anyone who's reached out to me. If you want to support the show, leave a review in iTunes. If you leave a review in iTunes, I want to start doing something new where I actually want to celebrate you, the listeners of the show, and I want to kind of celebrate your accomplishments and amplify what you're doing. So if you ever do write a review for the show in iTunes, just add in something about you that I can shout out on the show. 
I want to know if you did something brave, and it could be the tiniest thing. It doesn't have to be some huge, earth-shattering thing. It could literally be anything, or it could even be you deciding that you're going to work on something or deciding to commit to something, and it could be the tiniest thing. It doesn't have to be huge. It really doesn't. It just has to be something that you feel personally connected to, and I would love to amplify that by giving you a shout-out and giving you some love in the intro to a future episode. Because I think that one thing that we need to be doing together as women and one thing that I really want to model on this show is our ability to add magic and sparkle and just a little bit of that special something to each other in the way we reflect back to one another. So there is such enormous power in like these little moments of just congratulating someone for something or giving someone a really sincere compliment or recognizing something that they did in a very honest and heartfelt way from the heart and I want to try to start building that into the show so if you write a review please celebrate something about you so that I can come and celebrate it on the show and so that you can inspire everyone who's listening I think that would be so magical and so wonderful and I'll probably explode with joy and excitement if this starts to happen because I love when we all help each other feel amazing and I want to start to build more community around the show and and more of a sense of us all being interconnected to each other because I'm beginning to think that that's where a lot of the power is actually going to come from is the feeling and kind of the velocity that that will generate once we all start to feel like we're this giant interwoven spider web of a community. So if you ever do leave a review, you know I love them, but also write something in it about you, and there's a good chance that you'll hear about it in a future episode. With that, I'm going to say goodbye. I'll be seeing you soon. Oh, I'm getting sad. This is weird. I'm getting sad signing off the show. I think it's because I don't know when the next episode before season three is, but that's okay. I'm going to get through this. It's going to be okay. We're going to make it through the break. It's going to be fine. Now it's time to end, so I'm going to go, but I hope you have the most wonderful day ever, and I'm so, so excited to keep this going and to hear from more of you, so thank you so much for your support, and I'll catch you soon. Bye. Bye.